everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're gonna make a lipless crankbait out of Lexan. Now, I don't have a whole lot of this stuff left because we've made a few lures out of this stuff already. We made the original 3D minnow, then we made another twitch bait with a bit of an air gap at the top. Then we made this big one with the blood and guts chamber in it. And now I wanna make kind of a stylized lipless crankbait with BBs in it so it has a nice rattle to it. Now, this is gonna be a sinking lure but most lipless crankbaits are sinking lures anyway. So let's go to the dry erase board. So the idea is a shape where there's a big sort of lobe down near the bottom, near the front, because that's where most of the weight's gonna be. Most of the weight is gonna be made up of the BBs that are gonna be in a chamber, low and forward. We'll place the BBs in there and we'll make some twist eyes to insert and glue into the body for the tie on eye, the belly hook eye, and the tail hook eye. It should be a pretty simple design. Complicated part about this is layering the pieces and then deciding how to layer the paint in those pieces so the paint details are all on the inside of the lure and you get that really cool 3D effect. So it's gonna be two and a half inches long which is 6.35 centimeters. And it'll be one and a quarter inches deep from top to bottom, which is 3.18 over there about centimeters. All right, now we just need to glue these things together just temporarily. And we're gonna use this glue runner stuff. It's a double stick tape on a reel. Doesn't take a whole lot, just enough so it doesn't move around on me while I'm shaping. And after putting them together, we'll go ahead and give them some clamping pressure. And I'll let it sit like this for a few minutes and then we'll get to the next step. And now with some painter's tape on there, I can draw the lure out and be able to see it to cut it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing and sand off all the saw marks and I'll use the belt sander for that. All right, that has it pretty smooth. Pretty happy with that. The next step is to decide how I'm gonna shape it from front to back with the contour looking down on it. The way I'm going to contour the shape of the lure is by starting off at the widest point, which is going to be halfway down the lure. And then I'm going to contour it down just a little bit, just about the thickness of the two outer layers on a constant taper. And then up front, all I'm going to do is take these corners off and round these edges. And I'll round over the back a little bit too, and leave this kind of wide. I want it to stay sort of blocky because that'll give it a better wobble. So this material is a little bit heat sensitive, so you gotta kind of take it slow or else you'll start getting melted globs on the end. It's a good idea to check your progress pretty constantly. Make sure you don't overdo it. Slow and careful is the ticket. I've got the taper shaped out pretty much the way I wanted to. I've started to round off both the top and the bottom, but I'm not going to do the final shaping with this until I've got it all taken apart and all put back together. So it's quite a bit different than most builds. So the next step is to pull these pieces apart and cut out the rattle chamber. And then we're
right, now that I've got this thing cut out, smoothed out, I'm gonna take these two apart again and then clean all these pieces with alcohol to get all that goo from the double stick tape. And then we'll be ready to start thinking about painting. When you're doing this kind of build, you gotta think about how your assembly and your paint job is gonna kind of work out. Because what I like to do with these things is to paint them from the inside out. This way you get this layered paint job that looks really 3D, but it takes a little bit of thinking. You can't just throw it together because I'm not gonna put any paint on the inside surfaces of the very middle of this thing. I'm gonna glue this first. And that's important because these screw eyes are gonna run right in between these two plates and I need them to be glued well so I can be sure that they're not gonna pry apart because that center layer is the only layer that's going to be under any force to try to come apart. So what I'll do with these is sand the inside surfaces really lightly and then I'm going to glue them with UV cure epoxy. And that's more or less what it looks like. I'll do the other one and then we'll get ready to glue. All right, I've got them wiped down with alcohol and I'm going to use this UV epoxy resin as a glue. And all I'm going to do is using a brush I'm gonna put a very thin coat on one side and then squeeze them together. The tricky part is keeping them aligned as you get it to set. And of course, it'll set with some UV light. And you can set this glue with a UV flashlight if you want to, but it's a lot easier if you've got something stationary. So you can use both hands to align this stuff. It's just a matter of putting these together. And as you squeeze it, all those scratches get filled in with resin and disappear. So I'm gonna align it really well. And I've turned my UV spotlight upward so I can use it like a little table. And I can just set this right on top, make sure it stays aligned, and turn the light on. And I'll let that go for a few minutes because there's a lot of glue in there. So this is a really good time to answer the question of the week. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, every week I try to answer a question that's posted in the comments by subscribers to the channel. So if you're interested in getting a question answered, don't forget to put your question in the comment. The question I'm going to answer isn't really a question, but kind of a semi-debate. And I know I'm going to upset some people, but hang with me. The reality is there's no magic. There is no magic. And I know a lot of us as fishermen, you know, we kind of get a little bit superstitious. Sometimes we wear our lucky hat every time we go fishing. Sometimes we make sure there's no bananas on board. And you know when you catch a fish on that first cast, you know you're not gonna catch any more fish all day. Now all of us are reasoning people. We know all that is nonsense, but still we kinda keep the bananas off the boat, right? Now when it comes to replicating lures or copying a lure that maybe you bought, let's say from Rapala, and you make your own version and you do your best, to get it exactly like it. Or like in my case, I make it a little better. The debate is that, that even if you can make that lure the same exact size, the same exact weight, distribute the weight inside exactly the same way and put the same exact hardware on there, you can't get it the same. And that's really not true. Theoretically, you should be able to replicate a lure perfectly. There's no magic in the lure. You can make a lure out of balsa and have it be exactly like a lure that was made out of a harder wood. Or you can make a lure out of resin and have it be exactly like a lure that was made out of balsa. It's a matter of getting the shape exactly right, the volume exactly right, the weight distribution right, and all of Newtonian physics will tell you that it will be exactly the same kind of lure. Now that said, every lure fisherman out there knows that if you go out and buy five of your favorite lures, there's a good chance there'll be one that behaves a little differently. And that's a testimony to how difficult it is to get it exactly right. Even the factory gets it wrong sometimes. And the reason for that is that water is so viscous that even at slow speeds, it's applying a strong force to any body that's actually traveling through that water. So if you have a slight deviation in the dive bib, it's gonna make a big difference in water. And if there's a slight divot in the body, you might see the lure swim just a little differently. And of course, there's no telling what kind of mistakes a factory can make on the inside of the lure. Maybe there's a weight placed slightly off, or maybe it wasn't exactly the right weight. But the real takeaway here is that as a lure maker, you can actually use all that to your advantage. You can make those slight tweaks to get those slight differences in action and in behavior, either in the way it swims or the way it sinks or the way it comes back up after it's dived down. All that can be manipulated with just a little bit of creativity. But don't be a victim of the sort of magic of lures. The reality is, is if you wanna make an exact copy, you can do it. You're not gonna make 100 a day like they do in a factory, but you might make one in a week that is absolutely precise. All right, I hope that clears a few things up and don't forget to leave your questions in the comments. Yours might be the next one answered in a video.
Let's get back to the build. All right, it's set well, and you can see that it filled in all the cracks. So it looks like a solid piece of Lexan. So as I was saying, you gotta really plan your paint scheme because you're actually painting from the outside in, you've gotta paint sort of backwards. So the last thing you would normally do, you do first. So I'm gonna start with applying a silver scale pattern on the two sides of the centerpiece. And that's because I'm gonna paint this a sexy shad paint scheme. That's a paint scheme I really like because it works well in salt water and in fresh water. All right, so I'm gonna start off by painting this with a very light coating of iridescent silver. And this is from Golden Paint. And I have to say, if you've never tried Golden Paint, these airbrush paints are absolutely the best, at least in my experience. That looks about right. Let's move on to the next piece. So I've gone ahead and put some tape on the outside plates so I can hold on to them. Remember, I'm painting on the inside, so the outside doesn't matter much. First thing I gotta do on this thing is put the yellow stripe on there. So I've got a little stripe template. All right, there it is. Hopefully that shows up on the camera. All right, now I'm gonna put the scale mesh on there and I'm gonna use this transparent blue by Badger Paints. It's called Ghost Tint Blue. I'll have it be a little more opaque at the top and a little more of a mist on the bottom. All right, that looks pretty cool. I'll do the other one now. So at this point, before I can put the other plate on there, I've got to put the BBs inside it. And here's where we got to get into a little bit of engineering, not a whole lot. Lexan will sink in water because it's got a specific gravity of about 1.2. So anything with a specific gravity greater than one is going to sink. Less than one, it'll float. Now I want it to sink and I want it to have a good amount of weight towards the head. But since I've removed that amount of Lexan, I got to make sure that the BBs I put in there makes up at least twice as much of weight of volume of water that would fill that cavity so that I'm sure that it tends to be sinking towards the head. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put it on my scale. I'll zero the scale with it on there. Then I'm gonna fill that cavity with water just a couple of drops at a time till it's right up to the surface, till it's as full as it could get. So that should do it. So that water weighs right around one gram. So that's one cubic centimeter of water there. But what I need is to make sure that I can replace that with at least double the weight in BBs. So I need about two grams or a little more than two grams of BBs. So with the water out of it and it zeroed again, I'm gonna go ahead and just add BBs here until I have at least 200, hopefully like 250 without overfilling this cavity. There's 202, 2.4 grams. I think that's all I really should put in there and I think it should be enough anymore, and I think there won't be enough room for them to rattle. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this, and I have to be really careful not to get too much glue around the cavity so it doesn't seep in there and end up gluing those ball bearings together. So I'm gonna be super conservative with the glue right near the edge of the ball bearing chamber. And with this one, I'm gonna give it an initial set with this UV flashlight, just so I know it's not gonna move on me when I move it over to the big light. And I'll leave that for a few minutes. This, thing, this thing's got a pretty nice rattle sound to it. And we still need to smooth off these surfaces and round off the edges. And remember, all the paint's on the inside. So we can do all that still without damaging it. So that's what I'm going to do next. After that, we'll glue in the twist eyes. you can see the taper now and how it's rounded off along the edges on the bottom and along the edges on the top. All right, after a bit of hand sanding uh, all the way to 120 grit, it's shaped, uh, shaped as I want it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make the twist eyes so we can put them on. All right, as always, I'm gonna use a number 12 stainless steel leader wire. It's a 174 pound test and I'll cut three, four inch pieces so I can make these. And I like to prep them with a bent eye and with a little bit of shoulder on it. And I'll twist them using these safety wire twist and pliers. All right, I'll make the other two and then we'll cut them to the proper size. First, we need to drill holes. All right, that should be deep enough.
All right, the last one is the one on top. And this one is the critical one. It's really gonna be the one that determines the action of the lure and how well it dives. The farther back you go, closer to the center point, the less it'll dig in the water, the less it'll dive. But if you move too far forward, it'll stop acting like a lipless crankbait and start acting like a twitch bait and just kind of go all over the place. So the sweet spot is typically somewhere between one third of the way and one half of the way. I like to have it closer to the one third mark. I find that it gives you a nice balance between wiggle and dive. All right, I've just blew out those little drilled out ports and I'm gonna use the same kind of glue. I'm gonna use that epoxy, the UV cure epoxy, and I'll squeeze it in using this little fine tip bottle, fill those ports as far as I can. And then all I have to do is put the twist eyes in, put it on the light again. It only takes like 20 to 30 seconds for it to be fully set. And you know you've got it nicely filled when the edges of the holes just disappears. And we'll hit it with the UV flashlight to get it set initially so it doesn't move while we do the other ones. All right, I wiped it down with some alcohol so we can finish up the paint job here. What I'm gonna do first is give it just a little more blue on the top, just misting it above that yellow stripe. And I'm gonna put a blotch of blue right here where the uh, eye is gonna go. All right, that looks pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna use some opaque black for the top and a strike eye. All right, that looks pretty good. And as a last touch, I'm gonna to put some of this interference blue on the black. And what that does is it acts like a color shift. And when the black goes on an angle to the sun, it turns kind of blue. That should do it. And now we'll put on a little golden eye Now it's just a matter of clear coating this thing. And I know it looks a little bit dull right now, but once that clear coat goes on, it's really gonna pop. The transparency of the material is really gonna come through. You'll really be able to see light and those little balls. The clear coat really changes the way it looks. So I'm gonna put a couple of coats of the Minwax Polyacrylic. I use it as a clear mid coat. So I'll get back to you when I'm clear coating. All right, so now I'm just gonna wait for this thing to set and then we'll take this thing to the water and see how it performs. There's no guarantees. Lipless crankbaits can be sometimes a little bit fussy about how well they work, even when you tick off all the boxes for a design that you're pretty sure is gonna work. So next time you see it, it'll be on the end of a fishing line. All right, we're at Big Lake Santa Fe. This thing came out really nice. I'm really stoked with just the way the colors sort of blend together and just the clarity of the plastic really came out cool now it's just a matter to see if it actually swims well so i'm out here on big lake santa fe it's not too long a drive for me to get here and it's the closest big lake that has semi-clear water it's overcast right now but hopefully the sun will come out and we'll get better shots in the water i gotta tell you i'm a little jittery because i was i was running over here a mouse came out of somewhere on the boat i kind of lifted my legs up in fear <laughs> like you see in the cartoons with lady kind of jumps up on a stool anyway freaked me out i have no idea where he is i have to figure out how to flush them out. I'm going to get some good photographs of this and I'll put a slideshow at the end so you get a closer view of how this came out. But now let's see how this thing swims. Looks pretty good. Real nice swim. I'm surprised at how wide it actually wobbles. Try a longer cast and see if it comes back straight. It's moving to my right, so I'm going to tweak it a little bit. Small adjustments, that's the trick. That's got it. All right, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and uh, get some underwater shots.
I hope I got some good underwater shots. You never know until you get them on the computer. I'm gonna do a little fishing with this. I'm always hesitant to fish with a brand new lipless crankbait because I lose them like crazy. They always snag on me. But stick around for the slideshow. And if you have any comments on this build, any suggestions, stick them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.